we are back once again with another very special edition of Spark of STEM, the Coffee Break series designed to inspire educators just like you. This program is brought to you by the USA Science and Engineering Festival. And for the past few weeks, we've touched on everything from math to at-home science experiments. But today, we touch on something very near and dear to me. Yes, Cinnabons. Delicious, mouth-watering, juicy, cinnamon-rich. Wait, what? Oh, that's a different science video? Oh, today, we talk about something very near and dear to me. Yes, engineering not Cinnabons. My name is Maynard Okereke, better known as the Hip Hop MD, and I'm a science communicator as well as your host for this series. And I actually have a background in civil engineering. Engineering is one of the most fundamental tools in problem solving, and no one does problem solving quite like Learning Undefeated. So today we're going to hear from Learning Undefeated's Chief Innovation Officer, Jen Colvin. Jen is a thought leader in the innovative delivery of STEM education and Learning Undefeated provides life-changing STEM experiences for high needs communities by providing equitable access to education and inspiring students to imagine their own success. If you know anything about my hip hop science platform, you know that this is something I'm a huge advocate for. And speaking of advocates, this entire amazing program is sponsored by AstraZeneca, whose team will be sharing a little bit about why STEM matters later on in this coffee break. But first, it's time to spark your excitement and knowledge and learn how engineering design challenges can be applied to your classroom and provide unique takeaways and problem solving skills for your students. So take it away, Jen. Thanks a lot, Maynard. And thanks everyone else for joining me today for your coffee break. I'm Jen Colvin, I'm from Learning Undefeated, and we're gonna talk about ways that you can spark up your own classroom by turning everyday activities into engineering design challenges. Learning Undefeated is driving gender and race equity in STEM through experiential and deep impact learning experiences for students from under-resourced communities. We provide standards aligned, fun, and engaging experiences that motivate our students to participate. These experiences leverage the practices of STEM with gameplay, collaboration, learning by doing, and critical thinking using everyday materials, all while exposing our participants to a wide variety of STEM professionals from different backgrounds, gender, race, and ethnicity. I'll cover four different examples for grades ranging from K to 12 to help illustrate how easy it is to take any activity and turn it into an engineering design challenge. There are a few important things for you to consider. First, the problem. What is the challenge you're presenting to your students? Second, what are the criteria or the constraints? How will they know what success looks like? Third, design and build. That, of course, is the fun part. They're going to want to spend the most time on that. But fourth, how will they evaluate that design? How will they iterate on it? And how will they present that da data to you? What worked? What didn't work? How can they make improvements? These four pieces are essential in making an engineering design challenge, but the best part is that you only need to make a few small tweaks to existing activities to fit this template. Our first example of converting an activity to an engineering design challenge comes from The Three Little Pigs. We use the storybook The True Story of The Three Little Pigs with students in grades K through 2. It provides an opportunity for students to practice their reading and their listening skills, but most importantly, it lets them get involved in problem solving. As the story generally goes, the wolf is able to blow down the straw house, able to blow down the wooden house, but is unable to blow down that brick house. And we've seen lots of teachers in the past have their students build houses out of straw, wood, and brick. But we took it a step further by turning it into a challenge. Remember your four things. First, your problem. This is a community restoration effort. The pig in the brick house wants to rebuild homes in the community destroyed by the wolf and needs your help to do it. Second, there are criterion constraints. To be successful, the house needs to withstand the wolf, a pig needs to fit inside, and it has to have a roof. To make things a little more challenging, you can also incorporate a budget. Since most of your students may not be learning to do math with money at this age, you can also just stick to counters. Each of the materials your students wish to use will cost a certain number of counters, of which they only have 20 to spend. The wolf, simple fan. Little pig, little pig, let me in. For the third step, they need to design and build. The students get to designing both individually and as a group, and then they build their designs out. Testing, the last step, is done by having our big bad wolf, the fan, blow on the houses to see if they get blown away or apart. And then we use a rubric to evaluate their overall designs, and if time remains, students can even present their designs. An example for a slightly older age group would be our biomimicry activity. This activity is targeted for grades four to five, but can also extend into middle school when you're learning about environments and how species adapt for survival. 
Learning Undefeated uses this activity to introduce students to bioengineering and how nature has assisted in our use of technology, in particular in prosthetics design and function. Ideally, this type of activity is designed with 3D printers in mind, but we focused on a low-tech version for accessibility purposes and emphasized designing prototype models. The problem is a great way to adjust for appropriate ages and your community. We center our problem around a work accident and the need to design a prototype hand prosthesis. You probably have a lot of great ideas for problems that are more applicable to your students. In our challenge, the student's design must be able to grab a water bottle, lift the water bottle up and down, and hold the water bottle tight enough to twist and remove the cap. We also challenge them to base their design off something in nature. Like the previous activity, the students operate on a budget to purchase their materials. Students design individually then as a group. Because the concept may be new to the students, we will demonstrate an imperfect working model made of straws and string to show how a prosthesis functions. Testing is conducted using an empty water bottle. You may always scale up your testing by adding liquid to the bottle and even using larger bottles. If there is time, we encourage students to present and explain the process from beginning to end. This is a great way to incorporate the important need to develop language skills in STEM. Our third example uses a common chemical reaction I bet most of you are already using in middle school classrooms, combining baking soda and vinegar. Sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid react to form carbon dioxide, water, and sodium acetate. Learning Undefeated's instructional designer, James Hong, takes this a step further and challenges students to harness the power of carbon dioxide gas to propel a bottle rocket truck. He designed this activity for when middle school students start learning about chemical reactions and as a revisit to forces. The biggest twist here is that instead of trying to make their bottle rocket truck travel as far as possible, we want students to consider fuel efficiency in trucking and transportation. The goal instead then is to determine how much baking soda and vinegar to use to reach a specific endpoint without wasting their fuel. Students need to design a truck that is powered by a chemical reaction and travels a set distance to minimize costs of transportation. We set a start and finish line for students. Their success is based on how close to the finish line they can get. Going over the finish line is better than falling short. Budget funds are used for truck parts and fuel in the form of baking soda and vinegar. An important reminder here for students is that they're trying to minimize costs. Students design individually and as a group then are off to the races. Testing is a lot of fun, but be prepared to smell like vinegar and make sure to not test around carpet. Our example high school activity focuses on computational thinking. One of the most common introductions many of you give your students to computational thinking is to emphasize the importance of explicit instructions that can be understood by a computer. Maybe you give them the instructions to make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. We take this a step further in how computational thinking is important in tackling real life conservation issues such as Operation Polar Eye led by Northrop Grumman and the San Diego Zoo. I really like this authentic real-world problem. Students need their drone to cover as much territory as possible in order to help map the Arctic and begin to understand how climate change is impacting polar bears. In order to determine success, we provide maps with a starting drone location for the students to begin working with. Unlike in our other examples, the greatest number of squares covered is what will dictate success. However, the constraints are also much more unique. Rather than money, we limit the number of moves that a student may have for their drone. Furthermore, they cannot backtrack. The drones are not allowed to go back through a previously covered square, and they cannot fly through the mountains. They must only go around. We also like to incorporate a stricter time limit with this challenge. In the design build phase, your students are going to work individually as part of a group. We provide four maps for each group, so each student will work individually on their map. Testing is also slightly different, as we want to provide an introduction to pair coding. When a student finishes their inputs for their drone on their map, they calculate the total number of squares covered and then pass that map to another group member. The map is then checked again in terms of movement to see that every drone move was legal and that the total number of squares covered is correct. This activity then concludes with a discussion about the role of different maps and starting points, the restricted movement inputs, and how to better optimize movement across the map. Now it's time to challenge yourself, literally. What activities do you have that you could convert to engineering design practices? Don't worry, I've got all the resources you need to do any of the activities we've talked about today and more on Learning Undefeated's website at learningundefeated.org. While you're there, check out our other resources, including At Home Science, which are great for extra credit or homework assignments. They're short video experiments designed to be used at home with household materials. We've also got our robust standards-aligned digital STEM learning resources, Anywhere Labs, lots of digital lesson bundles for you from bio 
and chemistry, environmental and science, to genetics, health, and more. And finally, I've got lots of engineering design challenges. You can check out our engineering design curriculum for grades K through eight. While you're there, we've got lesson plans, assessments, and PowerPoint slides for all the activities. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed your coffee break. Thanks so much for inviting me to do it with you. Maynard, back to you. Woo! Engineering Design Challenges, presented in a simple and applicable format for students to not only get curious about, but also get hands-on. Doesn't get much better than that. Thank you, Jen. One of the things that sparked my interest in engineering was that ability to discover solutions to real-life problems and learn how to apply multiple areas of science to a specific challenge. These types of challenges are why STEM is the future and why it's so important to get students excited about these fields. Our sponsor AstraZeneca also realizes this and is here to talk about why STEM matters. I think STEM education is really important. It helps us to understand how the world works or doesn't work. STEM knowledge goes beyond a career. It's knowledge for life. Building student skills, content knowledge, and fluency in STEM, no matter where they live, is so essential in developing the next generation of creative and innovative leaders. Science, technology, engineering, math, and scientific literacy matter because an understanding of science gives us a common language based on evidence and data. We're using scientific method as a backbone for analyzing new technologies. It's really important to learn these skills so that you can apply them in everyday life. STEM matters because the world depends upon it. We use it in our everyday lives and it's everywhere. STEM and scientific literacy will help us to better understand and meet the challenges posed by emerging diseases, food insecurity, climate change, alternative energy resources, space exploration. The future is STEM. Thank you, AstraZeneca, for your incredible support and helping make this Spark of STEM Coffee Break series possible. And for everyone watching this series, I hope you feel the greater sense of pride in knowing why all the hard work you do matters. A huge shout out to Jen at Learning Undefeated for showcasing incredible examples of adaptable frameworks that can turn any activity into an engineering challenge. I mean, incorporating biomimicry with engineering design build for fourth through seventh graders, amazing. For all you educators watching, formal or informal, these are the types of learning tools that can not only plant the seeds of curiosity for students, but help take their ability to identify a problem, understand the constraints, design a solution, and evaluate the results to the next level. You can download some of these lesson bundles, activities, assessments, and plenty of other resources to use for your classroom directly from the Learning Undefeated website at learningundefeated.org. You can also find them on the good old socials at Learning Undefeated. Oh, and speaking of socials, you can also find more about the Spark of STEM Coffee Break series at USA Science Fest. And if you choose to do any of these lesson plans you learned with your students, make sure to tag us and use the Spark of STEM hashtag. Make sure to also follow to get updates about more series just like this every Wednesday, as well as on demand if you ever miss an episode. Trust me, even a Cinnabon isn't any match for this goodness. Thanks for watching.